Hello, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Naga Manchetti. Here's our top story. Broaching the subject of a transfer of power in Syria. Welcome to the programme. Other stories we're keeping across for you. Hello, let's start with a breakthrough in the Syrian peace talks in Geneva. The Syrian government has told the UN that women and children can leave the besieged area of the city of Homs. Talks on Monday are expected to continue on the still unresolved subject of allowing aid convoys into Homs. Also, the two sides could begin to discuss the divisive issue of the transfer of power. Islit Khan reports. Protests in Ukraine are spreading further outside Kiev with reports of unrest in the east, north and south of the country. The fresh unrest comes after one of the opposition leaders rejected President Viktor Yanukovych's offer to appoint him as Prime Minister. He said that key demands must be met, including new elections. Alpha Patel has more. The former partner of the French President Francois Hollande has arrived in India. She wants to raise awareness about child malnutrition. Valerie Trevela was greeted by a media scrum when she entered the airport in Mumbai. It's been two weeks since a magazine published allegations that Mr. Hollande has been having an affair with an actress. I should warn you, this report by Tim Nielsen does contain some flash photography. We're going to be talking about the French economy um, in the newspapers, but also, Sally, you're interviewing the French finance minister, or hearing his comments later on as well, yes, I know. Yes, indeed. Yes, he was uh, in Davos for that World Economic Forum, and uh, we grabbed him while he was there and grilled him about the French economy because he moves. So we'll be looking at that and the other business stories. I will see you soon. See you soon, Sally. Thank you. Monday is International Holocaust Remembrance Day and ceremonies will be held to remember the victims of the Nazi Holocaust during the Second World War. Six million Jews, two million Roma and thousands of other people were killed in Nazi death camps. Now there are fears that anti-Semitism is on the rise. A recent survey of 6,000 Jewish people found that a third have faced physical or verbal abuse. Stephen Evans reports from Berlin. Steve Evans there. Now in other news, the US stars of the... Angeles for the biggest night in the music calendar, the 56th Grammy Awards. Now, French pop band Daft Punk were the big winners on the night. The two surviving Beatles, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr, came together for a rare joint performance. Peter Bose, you what I'm not so familiar with, the um, rap world at the moment, and there, there were some stars there. Peter, always good to talk to you. Thanks for giving us a flavour of the glamour of the Grammys. Thanks very much, Peter Bose in Los Angeles. Stay with us on BBC News. There's plenty to come. We're talking about... Let's take a look at some of the UK news now. Lloyds Bank. You're watching BBC World News. I'm Naga Manchetti. Here are the headlines. There have been more claims from the fugitive intelligence analyst Edward Snowden about the activities of the US National Security Agency. He told German television on Sunday that the NSA targeted big companies that are in competition with American firms. Well, it's these types of revelations that have shaken the trust that people have in the technology giants who provide us with everyday services. As part of a day of special coverage of surveillance, Paul Adams looks at what comes next for the internet and the world. Let's turn to sport now and some tennis. Stanislas Varinka is celebrating after winning the first Grand Slam of his career. It was a huge upset. He beat Rafael Nadal in four sets at the Australian Open. Not the classic match many had hoped for. An injury to Nadal left the Spaniard requiring treatment on an injured back. Still, doesn't take the gloss off a special win for the Swiss player. Rafa Nadal, he's been a great winner, but he's also a very gracious loser. Let's move to golf. American Scott, American Scott Stallings won by one stroke on nine under at the Farmers Insurance Open in California on Sunday, claiming his third PGA Tour title in three years. Now, the mainstream popularity of bitcoins is growing. You can use the digital currency to buy a beer in Berlin, order a pizza in Amsterdam or hire a taxi in Edinburgh. Now, a British university is going to allow students to use them to pay tuition fees. We're asking if bitcoins really will revolutionise the way we pay for things. Tim Muffet has been finding out. I must say, I've never used bitcoins. I can't imagine using them or needing to use them, but perhaps I need to be convinced. Give me your thoughts on bitcoins. Do you use them? Will you use them? Do you think they'll catch on? My address on Twitter is at BBC Nag. It's always good to hear your thoughts on the stories we're covering. Don't forget, Sally will be up in a few minutes. She's taking a look at Japan. It's had one of its biggest deficits ever reported. She's going to explain why that has happened, a biggest trade deficit. Now, though, it's time to take a look at the weather, where you are. I'll see you very soon.